I've just dropped the heating system out, as you can see, and chances are now, like an idiot, that's going to freeze and cause everyone to slip up down there, but it is what it is, we've got to get these things done. As you'll have seen, I caught a load of water in my foldable bucket here from the heating system, but when you're working with chippies, with a size 13, size plus. 13 bloody clown feet on them, look, I'm throwing it back in, it's it over look. Can't get the stuff. I'm just down at my lockup, getting ready to do something that I should have done before Christmas. But to be honest, doing it after Christmas is probably going to earn me more money than it would have done doing it before Christmas. And you probably guessed what it is already. Are you even a real plumber if you haven't got a lockup that's full like that? So we've got 18 kilo of copper, 34 kilo of brass, with a grand total of. Right, we're on a nice frosty, cold winter's morning in Birmingham and we've got a bathroom to do here along with Dave Bishop, the carpenter, or my carpenter, he does my work for me. He's got VIP parking right near the front door of the house. So Dave's doing a bathroom, uh, he does a little bit of everything to be fair, but he's got me in to do part of the first fix. He wants me to do the shower valve, the radiator work and get some pipes in. So we're here first thing in the morning, I've just dropped the heating system out as you can see and chances are now like an idiot that's going to freeze and cause everyone to slip up down there but it is what it is we've got to get these things done so let me take you inside and show you exactly what we've got coming up so this is the little job for today dave's right hand man nige is on the job as well so they've stripped out this complete bathroom as you can see what dave wants me to do is Mount the mixer shower here, come off there. We've got our hot and colds running along there. What was here, Nigel? A bath? A bath, yeah. So we've got yeah. hot and colds that were feeding the bath. So we're going to come up into our mixer valve here, then off there, we're going to run two pipes, one for the rainfall and one for the body one that will be in there at some point. We've also got to cut out this loop because obviously the shower tray is going here. This will have been from where the old airing cupboard was, they looped the primary into the heating system because they're now on a combi. So we'll cut that out, get that under the floor, and then we've got to put a towel rail on here. There was a towel rail here or a radiator here and another one here. So we're taking out these heating pipes and altering it around there and coming, bringing the pipes out the wall there, ready for the towel rail. And then Dave's doing the other bits, the toilet, the basin. He basically wanted me to do the, the crap bit, in all honesty. Didn't he, Nige? He certainly he don't did. want to do that. He, he wants me want to, to do that. He wants yeah. me to do the crap. So, so yeah, as I said, I've just dropped the heat, and I want to try and get the heating done pretty quick. So I've dropped the top of the heating. These valves are open now, so we can alter that, get that in, refill the heating up, and get the customers heating back on, and then we can work on the hot and cold through the valves. So with the heating drained down, this is where we're having the towel rail. So I've marked on the wall 450. We're going to cut into the plasterboard there, bring the tails of the pipes out, connect onto the existing heating system, bring that out and then we can get the heat and fill back up and then that's that side of it done. As I said, there was a towel rail over here or a radiator over here. We've took that one out just to free up a bit, just to free up a little bit of space there. So yeah, we'll get this done quickly. Um, it's as simple as that, just bringing the pipes up and out. So I want to get that done now and then get the heating back on. So that's the pipe work in now for the towel rail. And as I said earlier, we've got to take this loop out that was in from the original gravity fed system. So I'm just going to cut it here. Obviously it loops over and comes back to here. I'm going to cut it here on this other primary and then just pop a little bit in the middle. So we'll grab a little foldable bucket. We can get it under. So many people say, why don't you use a bluster bin bag? Imagine rocking into someone's house with just a black bin bag to catch water in. How professional does that look? Not very. I'll stick with my foldable bucket, I think. So, let's get this cut. We have put a cap on that one. Don't know if you can see it. We have put a cap on that one. So we do know there's not much water in it, if a little bit. Should have got me cutter out of the van. I've got one of Milwaukee pipe cutters. Okay, there we go. A little 
little bit of water. So we've got that one cut. We'll cut this other one just here and get the other bit in. Get, and then get that bit of pipe in. Just let people know, Tiff, I'd have cut that last floorboard out for you. Well, you'd have took that out. I'd have took that out. Oh, you've good to me. Dave just. Especially because it's cut already. He just. Uh, he likes to make things a bit of a challenge, doesn't he? So we've got 22 more now, we've cut that loop out, we'll just get the press gun on it. Like so. Done. So there we go, that's replacing that, where is it? That loop, that existing gravity fed eating loop. So now we've got our, now we've got that in and we've got the, that loop. That loop, Nigel's taking it for the scrap man straight away, it's Christmas bonus. Um, now we've got that in, we've got the caps on the heating pipes, we can get the heating system filled back up. Look at that, it looks like a ray of light behind my head. There we go. So with that done, we'll get the heating system filled back up, get the customers heating back on, then we can work on the hot and the colds. Heating pipes are all filled up now. As you'd have seen, I caught a load of water in my foldable bucket here from the heating system. But when you're working with chippies, with a size 13, size foot. 13 buddy clown feet on them. Look, I'm putting it back in. Look, don't worry about it. Yeah, just can't get the stuff, honestly. Right. So we're moving on to the shower valve now. Customers pick the shower valve up. To be fair, it doesn't look too bad. We all know where it could have come from, but thankfully it doesn't look like it has. So, we centralised this, we're going to bolt this to the wall. We're going to come from the hot and cold that used to feed the bath down there, straight into the bottom, and we're going to come off the valve, run along the wall, and into where the shower area is going to be. Rainfall, body wand, as straightforward as that, and then we can bring up some hot and coals for the basin. So we get this bolt onto the wall now, and then we've got a fixed point to work from. So we mounted the main body of the shower in here. We've run the two pipes around there, got it taped up, got it clipped to the wall. We're going to bring them up there into, I use wall plate elbows. So I use a wall plate elbow at the top, wall plate elbow at the bottom. And then what we can do is put the arm in there, and then the bottom bit we'll put into there for the body wand. Come down in copper pipes. What we've done, gone into plastic in the floor just because it's a lot easier to reuse the holes that are already there. We've got plastic on the job. So we're going to run that round, pick the basin up across for the toilet. Then we can get the water back on, check the valves working before any boards or anything go on. So we can pressurize the valve up. We'll put two caps or isolator valves on the outlets and we can get that pipe working there tested as well. Right then, for some reason, I'll never film the end of this job, so I'm just going to take you through and use this snippet from Dave Bishop's Instagram page of the finished bathroom. As you can see, it looks absolutely amazing. Shout out to Dave, he's done a cracking job getting it finished perfectly. Basin's there, Dave's fitted everything afterwards. As I say, I only did the shower valve that you've got there. We run the pipe around that wall for the rainfall and for the body wand. And as you can see, just down the shower trays in where we altered the pipe work underneath. We've got the tower rail on the back wall, uh, that's all connected in, heating's working, shower screen's up. But yeah, Dave finished it off really well, so yeah, shout out to Dave Bishop, cracking bathroom there, well done buddy. Right, I'm just down at my lockup, getting ready to do something that I should have done before Christmas, but to be honest, doing it after Christmas is probably going to earn me more money than it would have done doing it before Christmas, and you've probably guessed what it is already. It is weighing some scrap in. So I've, there's not a massive amount of scrap here and there's a reason for that. The tail end of last year was on that big house renovation and um, the builder supplied everything from it and all the scrap that we took out of there, the builder had already put his dibs on it. So it was part of the contract, part of the, the deal on that, on that renovation. But I want to try and get rid of this now because this has been a very, very long time coming. You can see my lockup is absolutely jam-packed. I think even from the start of doing this YouTube channel, the few times I've showed my lockup, um, I've always said I need to clean it out. And 
Are you even a real plumber if you haven't got a lockup that's full like that of crap? I think I know about four or five different trades people that have got little lockups around here and they're all literally the same. So I've managed to bag myself a new lockup closer to where I am. So what I'm gonna do, when I get the keys to that one, I'm gonna rack it all out properly and then we can move everything from this one over into that one, organized, tidy, done. So it just makes sense. To just, I might as well just leave it like that as it is at the minute. But for now, what I wanna do is get rid of some of this scrap and begin getting stuff out of it. Like there's a lot of bags and bits and bobs that are in here that I can take away and sort of make use of between the times when we're switching, switching lockups. For today, let's cut down this bit of scrap. There's a fair bit in there. There's bits in there. I was gonna cut up that. That's what I did for the, the press fit versus copper comparison. Now, loads of people have said, did you test those jigs? Because they think the, the, the speed that I soldered the copper one up at, the, the soldered one, they reckon it's gonna leak. So, what I might do is cap it off, fill it up and test it. Just, just for a bit of clarity, just for a bit of transparency, so that people know that, that, that it's all good. Because a lot of people said, oh, you, no one sold us up that fast. Even Andy, even Andy at Press It UK said to me, no one could solder up that fast and not have a leak. So I'm not gonna touch it. We're gonna get it connected up and test it. But for now, let's get this cut down into a couple of tubs so it's a bit easier. How much do we reckon here? It's not gonna be a massive amount, but drop in the comments what you think is gonna be the total of this. There's a little bit of 22, a little bit of 15, a little bit of brass. So yeah, it's not gonna be a lot, but just out of interest, what do you think it's gonna be? Let's uh, grab the little pipe cutter, get it all cut down into size, manageable sizes, and get it over to the uh, scrappies, see what they can give us. And also because I'm between jobs at the minute, I've, I've finished the job not far from here, and I've got another one where the customer's not gonna be in for a couple of hours, so I thought I might as well drop down here, get this done, tidy it up. It's just saving a little bit of time or grabbing a couple of hours where you can and make a few quid out of it. Right, as I said, we've not got a lot. We've got one tub there. I emptied everything out of the big um, dustbin, cut it all down so it's all crammed in there. We've got that tub full of copper, that tub full of brass, heating manifold. I don't know if they'll give me anything for that, but it'll be interesting to see what they'll give us for that little bit. I'm passing anyway. I was passing here. We've killed an hour or so. I'm passing the scrap metal merchants, so it's not costing me anything. I'm not going out of my way to do it. So we'll fly in there, see what they'll give us, and get on to the next job. Right then, let's do some undercover filming. I don't think we can film here, but we'll drop a bit of copper off in here, from out the van, and we'll see exactly what we're gonna get. So we've just been in, weighed it in, and to be honest, I'm quite impressed with what we've got. Bearing in mind, we had two Gorilla tubs, one Gorilla tub full of copper and one Gorilla tub full of brass taps, um, thermostat heads, just just random bits of brass and crap like that that we, we you just have kicking around. I hope it's worth it though, because I did slice my hand getting the, uh, the bucket out of the van and put it, loading it in there and the woman went, oh, there's a pump at the, oh, there was a pump at the bottom. I didn't hide it, I didn't know it was in there. Um, there was a pump at the bottom. She went, grab that out, put me hand in, pulled it out and scraped all the front of my hand off that. Anyway, we all wanna know what I got from that. So, a Gorilla tub, two Gorilla tubs, brass, copper, what do we reckon? So we've got 18 kilo of copper, 34 kilo of brass with a grand total of 226 pound and 20 pence. So for the sake of swinging by the lockup, couple of hours, grabbing that out, chucking it in the van, we was passing here anyway. So we slung it in, made 220 quid. Obviously, got to pay tax on that because a lot of scrappies, I think all scrappies now are, um, you've got to give your driving license, bank details and all that sort of stuff. You might get the odd moody one that will give you a bit of cash, but those days are long gone. You know the days when you used to, um, have a big divvy up at the end of the year uh they're long gone so yeah it's all legit pay a bit of tax on that and uh yeah it's 200 quid on it give or take <laughs>